Hey, so I feel like math and history, and we are going to be breaking the boundaries with economics. So what we're going to do is we're going to do two problems based off of saving, investing in the financial system, and also understand why we sometimes have to break the boundaries. So let's get to the problem. Oh, and yeah. We will be using the supply and demand curve graphs, but also this is the one where S represents savings, D represents investors. So before we start looking at to the problems, let's take a look at both the supply and the demand for this kind of unit. So for the supply, we're going to say if interest goes up, then we're going to say that the supply is going to go up. More people are willing to save more when they earn more interest. On the demand perspective, it's a little bit different. If R increases, then we're going to say that demand decreases because instead of earning, they're actually paying. So, when we encounter the problems, we'll be referring back to this. The problems within the problems. Let's get to the first problem, and it's actually on a worksheet we looked at. The model of the market for loanable funds shows that an investment tax credit will cause the interest rates to rise and invest to rise. Yet, we also suppose that higher interest rates lead to lower investment. How can these two conclusions be reconciled? Well, it's asking us, how can we understand number 10 as a question for the scenario? Well, first we gotta take a look at what is the definition of an investment tax credit? So, you realize the word taxes, right? Probably. It means you have to give money to the government or any political whatever it is each year. And not only that, when you overpay too much tax, that means you could A, leave that money in the tax count for next year so you don't have to pay much or take it out. Or, sometimes what the government does is call an investment tax credit, which means they'll give you more money to tax to the government. And also, they'll also give you more money to invest into a stock or invest into a government bond. So, now we understand what investment tax credit means. We understand that's going to increase the demand, but... Not only that, we gotta understand this on a graph on what we're trying to explain. Because learning about tax credit, ta investment tax credit, and only understanding it goes up is not the whole thing. So, looks like we have a supply and demand graph on this. So, when it explains that the investment tax credit will give money for you to invest in stocks or bonds. That tells you that the demand is going to go up. So we're going to move that demand curve all the way up. So D1. But there is a little bit of a problem. You see that middle row right there? We're going to call that RE, where savings and investment are the same and where they exactly hit the middle. We're going to label that right here. But there is a little bit of a confusion. If we mark the new equilibrium to be up here, and also if this part also hits right here, wait a minute. Something doesn't make sense. It explains in this scenario somehow that when the interest rate is going to go up, that's because of the amount of money we got from that investment tax credit to invest. 
and demand is going to go up for investors. That doesn't sound right, because the original problem is, if interest rates go up, then the demand decreases, because they don't want to pay off that interest. We're not saving, we're in the perspective of demanders or investors. So this doesn't seem right. Well, this is the only time it breaks the boundaries, because investment tax credits will definitely want us to invest more. However, since economics is proportional to the system, also the rate is going to go up. So after that happens, everything will recover back to normal. So what we're going to do is you see that equilibrium? What we are going to do is we're going to increase right here. Yeah, right here to show that many people are wanting to invest more. But sometimes that's not going to work. So this is the only time that it can actually break the boundaries. When you have investment tax credit, part of it is going up. But since you still have to kind of follow the rules with this, it goes down. But the reason why the demand curve went up is because the effect for demand that went up is a greater hit than the one that went down. So let's take a look at the next problem because you probably understand what it is. You probably guess what the next one's about. You probably guessed it. The supply! So let's get to it. So here's the next problem. So here's the next problem. Using a graph representing the market for loanable funds, show and explain what happens to the interest rates and investment if a government goes from a defect to a surplus. So when we were talking about national savings, we explained that a defect happens when the amount of taxes that we send to the government, what the government does is spend more than what they got from taxes. A surplus happens when the government still gets taxes, but spends less, causing the government to save more money. So let's rebuild that economic graph. So here is a plain economics graph. So using a graph representing the market for loanable funds, show and explain what happens to interest rates and investment if a government goes from a defect to a surplus. So we kind of need to do a little bit of drawing to help us understand the visual effects of a defect and a surplus. So we already explained that the government gets taxes from us, the citizens. So what it's saying is, say this box is the funds that the government has. What it is, is we have savings that go into the funds fundable savings, and then the government wants to invest it in, like, research project or infrastructure or blah blah, whatever it is. Then the other thing is, we are going to understand, going from the past videos, that, remember this equation? This is the national savings added up together. So right here, we said that this was private savings. And this is public savings. To put this in your own words, or to put this into a more simpler idea, private savings and public savings are different. Explain that one of them has to do with the money that you save and did not spend on your income. The other one is saving it for something else, the government. So the other thing is, if we understand what this picture means about pumping money into the government and spending it, and also this, even though that this is personal, that also works with the government too. Here, this one talks about the government, and this is talking about the citizens. So if we add those two, we will get our investment for our entire country. So it works for the country as well, the United States of America and everyone else. So going back to the problem, what it's saying is there's a defect. 
So that means it could have gone down. So we're going to put this right here. The supply went down. But the government then recovered with a surplus. The government went up. So this is what's happening right now. The surplus went up. Going back to the first unit, the more right you are on the graph, the more you have. That's why the supply curve is going to the right when it increases, and the demand curve is going to go to the right when it increases. The supply curve, when it goes like this, decreases. So let's mark our new equilibriums. So this is our original equilibrium, where investment and savings are the same, but the thing is, we moved our equilibrium right over here. And also, we have a secondary equilibrium right there. What's going to happen is for the same price or the same interest right there, and the other thing is, people are going to do this. And what it means is, the interest rate went down. But also, the supply went down. Hang on. I meant to say the supply went up. But, uh-oh. There is a little bit of a problem. We said the interest rate went down. The supply went up. But wasn't the entire law of economics the law of supply? If the interest goes up, then the savings go up. But in this scenario, they can break the rules too. We understand that this happens because the government went from a defect to a surplus. And when that happened, the interest rate went down. So the reason why we drew those lines to head down is what is going to happen is the government is going to have a tough time saving money since the interest went down for them. Therefore, they're going to spend. And not only that, that is a way the government can actually increase the national debt. And that is why we are also in like $31.4 trillion in debt. We can't do that. We, it's beyond, per, beyond repair. So for the government going from a defect from here to a surplus, they never realized, well, they could have, the interest rates went down, but also the supply went up. That extra money, there's no way people are going to save and put it into and earn interest. No way. So there's a higher chance for them to actually use that tax money and spend it on something. Like buildings or planes or blah 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 or projects or whatever it is. So that's how we understand how we can break the boundaries with economics. Even though they seem like some are going to work, some aren't. And that's why sometimes these and these are broken. I hope this video has helped you understand breaking boundaries with economics. Thank you for watching Cal Penalized Math Industry. Like and subscribe!